video, I'll discuss the importance of the correct placement of the left hand on the fingerboard. So, with a piano, for those of you who play piano, you know that as a player you can't do anything about the tuning of the piano. If it's out of tune, as a player you just have the notes and you play them and you can't really change any of the pitches. For those of you who play the guitar, it's very similar to the violin. However, much easier. So this is not a guitar, this is a ukulele. But if we look at it, it's very similar. It's got the frets. So the frets are sort of elevated. They're not level with the fingerboard. So if you have a look there, they sort of stick up. So when you press the string down, even though your finger is there, the string is actually stopped by this latest, the last fret. So if your finger is there, or whether you put it there, there, the last fret is the one that's stopping it. So let's have a look. If I play this A, if I place my first finger there, whether I place it there or there, the pitch is the same. So there's quite a bit of moving. See? Now the next one. So whether I put it there or there, you see I can move my finger in between these two frets. Then this one. However, if I move that much on a violin, let's see what happens if I take the violin. Exactly the same notes. Now let me play that on the violin. If I hear it, here's my A. Now I've got my first finger. Now if I move, remember I could move my finger quite a bit. Oh. That. So. Very different. Now there. Now if I move. Can you hear the difference? Now I could move my So on the violin, it will make a, already a difference. That little bit that I move it is changing the pitch. So because we don't have the frets, it's very uh, important to have an exact spot where we put the finger. Now to get that, some people put uh, little tapes. And for my students, those who really have uh, problems hearing the pitch in the beginning, some are very quick, they've got very good ears and they pick it up. But for some of us who may have may not have done music, um, it takes a bit of time. Even if you think that you don't have a good ear, you can develop it. And we have some pointers that we can use to make sure that we have the right pitch. So if you need a tape, I usually then see when my students get to the point when we start putting down fingers, whether they need a first finger tape to orient the first finger or whether it's the third finger that they need. And sometimes they might need two, but I don't really uh, ever give more than two little tapes. So say for instance we want to have a first finger tape. So let's see where we're going to put that. So what I usually use is a very thin little tape. You can buy it from uh, craft shops and uh, so it's already cut uh, about this thin and very thin because if you have electric tape or something that's thicker it might influence the pitch so let's see how much we need of this one so i usually take about enough to cover the fingerboard and wrap around the back then what you would like to do is to let me just get up here so you want to put it underneath the so the sticky part down, you put it underneath the strings like that and you move it up the fingerboard. So now let me get it back here. So now let's see where is the spot for the first finger. So I first sort of would cut it. That would be about long enough.
So then you have it lightly sticking on the fingerboard. And now we have to try and find where is the right spot. So it's under the strings now, so you can move it sideways like that. Now the best one to um, check with is the D string, so your strings have to be very much in tune. So first make sure that you tune your strings well. Um, I've got that in a separate video. So when you go to the D string, so here's your G string, there's your D string. The first finger on the D string, the name is E. And we also have an E here. So. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, but when it's, see here, that's now where the tape is. So that's a bit. I, I'm plucking the D, the first finger on the D, but I can actually hear this one vibrating. So let me come closer and see if you can hear that. So here is my. Can you hear that? I can hear it clearly, but I don't know if you can hear it on the camera. So that is now where I can hear the E ringing. So I have to move this tape down to about that spot because that is where the first finger will be ringing. So let me move that down. So now the another one you can test that should ring very well is your first finger on the G string. So G and then the next one is A. Can you hear? Can you hear that one? And if that one is correct, you will even hear the E ringing. You'll hear these two. So listen now when I pluck this first finger A, whether you can hear that. Can you hear that? I can hear them quite clearly. These two are ringing. So those are the two first fingers that you can test. So now I know. So now I can get my tape. And then your tape needs to be straight across to make sure that the others will also be in tune. So the, if that is straight across and your violin is in tune, your first finger on the E, on the A, on the D, and the G will all be in tune. So now what I do is I wrap the rest behind, and that should last for a little while. Now depending on every person is different, um, some people have uh, very warm hands, and it might happen that the glue on the tape sort of gets melted and then the tape starts moving around. So if that happens, you just change and you put a new one on. And actually quite often by the time your tape starts falling off, it's time to just remove it all together. Always test. Don't become dependent on it. If you can play without a tape, and I have some students who very quickly, if they do have a tape in the beginning, they very quickly uh, get rid of them. Once your hand is established and you can start listening, to these what we call ringtones. So these first fingers that I've just shown you, they are have all very clear ringtones. So the first finger on the G and the first finger on the D string will have clear ringtones. The first finger on the G will have the A. It's one octave lower than the A. So here's your A, one octave lower. So we call this sympathetic vibration. So if it's in tune, it sort of sympathizes with the, that vibration and that open string starts ringing. So the next one, the first finger on the D string, again, that's your E. The E will vibrate in sympathy. Now, 
those are your first fingers. Unfortunately, the first finger on the A string and the first finger on the E string, they don't have open strings that can vibrate sympathetically. Because this one is a B, we don't have a B string. This one is an F sharp and we don't have an F sharp string. So the two will be the G string, the D string first finger. Now, another one that we can listen to, that can help us to really train our ears to hear whether we're in tune, will be our third fingers. So, now we've got our spot for our first finger. So we should be able to then get that in tune. Now if you go one, two, three, so let's go E, first finger F sharp, two, second finger, and then that third finger. Now when we were when we were on the ukulele, you can re you remember I could move in quite a bit and it stayed the same. Here I need to be on the spot. Now if this third finger is in tune, if I climb up, this is E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. And I know that I've got an A string just next to it. On Here's my A string. So if this third finger, A, is in tune, it will ring with the open A. Now the best to hear the, these ringtones is with a bow. The pizzicato is not always all that clear, but when you're bowing, you can actually hear very clearly. So let's get the bow and see how to find this third finger ringtone. Now I can first test my first finger. So you remember, here's my D string. And first finger. So when I'm playing with a bow, you might be able to hear the open E string ringing. So listen carefully. Can you hear there? Listen for that. So I'm stopping it. I'm not touching that. Can you hear that? Now, let me go over to the G string. You will hear both of those ringing. These frequencies are in sympathetic vibration to the first finger. Good. Now that I've got my first finger there, let's try on the E string. So I've got my first finger, F sharp, F sharp, then G sharp. Now, three. Can you hear that nice ring? Now, if I move it like I did on the uh, ukulele, if I move it slightly back, it's very dull. Can you hear the difference? The moment it's in tune, it rings. Now, let me put it a bit higher. as if it gets clarity, it's sort of a very clear ringy sound. So that's how you can train your ear to listen for those ringtones and see if you can play around it because when you put your fingers down, that sounds quite close but is it ringy? There's the ringtone. Now, as I've just said, this is E, F sharp, G sharp, third finger is A. So, it rings one octave above the string below it. So the string on the left, if the way you're looking, on the left is the one that's going to ring. Now, if I do the same on the A string. A, B, C sharp, D. Now, there it's ringing. It's ringing with a string next to it, D. Again, there's a pattern. The third finger on the A string is also going to ring with a string next to it, on the left. So, now let's... Can you hear what? The moment it gets in tune, it rings. Dull. There it rings. Same thing on the D string. So D, first finger E, and we remember that can ring. Second finger F sharp, now G. If it's too high.
clear clarity so that clear tone will be the ring tone that vibrates with the string right next to it. Now for that, of course, your string needs to be free to vibrate. Because if, for instance, I play like this, and my fingers are too close to the G string, so if I put it on the D string, and it touches, you see now the inside of my finger is touching the G string, it can't vibrate. The moment I, so I have to play on the inside of my fingers. So the string on your left always has to be open to be able to ring. Same here, A. So if I put it too close, now I'm touching, so if I open it, the ringtone is so much clearer. Here on the E. Now if I touch those, now if I open it, can you hear how much clearer that ringtone is? So that's the important thing. Also, when I play these first fingers, in the beginning that's quite difficult for uh, beginners because uh, we tend to pinch with our thumb. But if from the beginning you can have a relaxed hand and really make sure that you have a slight opening here, and when you bring over your elbow to play on the DG string, bring over your elbow to play your first finger on the uh, D string, then you need a little tunnel there. Can you see through there? My finger comes through. There should be a tunnel. And now it's free to ring. If I pinch, if I pinch with my hand and the inside of my hand touches the E string, it cannot ring. So it's not going to ring. So if you can start, even as a beginner, from the beginning, to play with an open tunnel there, so that you always have a tunnel on the inside of your fingers and not pinch so hard that um, you touch those strings. Um, it's difficult in the beginning, but it really sets up your hand for a good posture. And later when you have to play double stops, and it will be so much easier because then you can already play an open string because later you'll have to play Now, if you pinch it, see, if the inside of your finger, of your hand touches the E string, it can't ring. So if you, see, it won't ring. Now I have to open it down. So it will help you with, later on when you get to Vivaldi and those, where you have a lot of these string crossings. Or if you have to play double stops. So you need that tunnel there. So even though that is more advanced and you only do that much later, if you do this from the beginning to have a tunnel and listen to your ringtones, your intonation will be so much better. So if you need it, once you've got your first finger tape and you're still struggling to get the third finger, put the tape there. So that, but the tape is never going to be 100%. It's a guidance. On the violin, it's the slightest movement. So let's have a look here. I'll come closer that you can see. So for instance, here I've got... So now look, if I just move it a little bit. Just that. My finger's standing up now. Now I just drop it a little bit. It's almost like a vibrato movement. But can you hear how it changes? So, if I have a tape there and I said, but my tape says it's there. You can make the minute, just the angle of your finger can change the pitch. Ever so slightly, so it will make it either in tune or not. And that is why it's so important to play in tune when you start learning vibrato. Many people say, oh, I, I really need to put feeling into my music 
And from the beginning, I love these songs and I want to play them. If you put in, if you start using vibrato, if you try to do vibrato, if you're not ready, if you don't have a relaxed left hand, if you don't play in tune, it's basically all you do is you'll be covering your bad intonation. Because when we do vibrato, we start on the clear tone. Hear it in? So now I've got my ring tone. Now I can put on vibrato, and vibrato always moves backward. I never start and get... I don't vibrato making the uh, pitch sharper. You start on the right pitch and then slightly lowering it and that's your vibrato and the speed of your vibrato. All that is a technique that you later... So you can have slow vibrato or more intense. But for all of this you really need very good bow control. So for those of you who are interested in vibrato, first do the basics. Get, work on your bow, your bow technique, your left hand technique, when you can play very well in tune. And I would suggest even that you start shifting, which means that you really have a very relaxed um, left hand. You're not pinching. Because if you pinch and you try to... All that happens is your... Your violin is going to shake. But you need to be able to be really relaxed. So if I pinch, all that happens is my violin does that. The violin stays... You see, so you have to be relaxed and be able to move. If you can shift from at least first to third position with ease and in tune, that's the time that I start my students with vibrato. And it's quite a journey to get there with uh, really building a good foundation on your intonation where you can depend on your ring tones and really good bow control. So start with the bow technique from the beginning, good string crossings, really being able to do slow control bows, that will help you a lot. Now there's one more ringtone that we can look at. And that is our fourth fingers. So as we know, when we play, say, A, B, the pinky, the E is the same as the open string. Now again, can you hear, I'm not touching the E string now with my bow, but my fingers on the right spot, but my E string is also ringing. Can you hear that? And do you know how I get that? Is because I've got a tunnel. None of my fingers here are touching. So. so that's what you always want to aim for, for your fourth fingers. So tunnel, so your pinky has to be round, elbow over, knuckles high, now, I'll see if you can see this. If I'm playing this, look at the A string and see if you can see it vibrating. I'm not touching it with a bow. Can you see how it's vibrating? Because it's sympathetic vibration. So let's have a look at the fourth finger on the G string. That is a G, A, B, C, D. My knuckles are high. I've got a tunnel. Nothing is touching there. Now let's have a look if you can see the D string. Is it ringing? You stop it. So can you see it's going crazy? And then there's your A. That's ringing. Now E. E is very thin, so you might not see it ringing. I can hear it. So those are your main ringtones that you can listen for. 
So your first fingers on the G and the D string. Your third fingers, E string, rings with the A. On the third finger on the A string, rings with the D. Third finger on the D string, rings with the G. And then your pinky on the G string, rings with the D. Pinky on the D string, rings with the A. And pinky on the A string, rings with the E. Now it's basically your first, third and fourth fingers that will really, if you always listen to that, can I hear the ringtone? So that will help you and very quickly you establish the correct position for your fingers because you're listening for that, your finger is adapting, it's usually very little, so if you're very close to the position it's just a little bit of adjustment and then you'll hear the ringtone. So in the beginning it really might take a while until you play that clearly but very quickly you really start enjoying those clear ringing tones and that becomes your playing and it helps also to amplify your sound because if you have an extra string that can ring in sympathy it it basically amplifies your sound so you have a bigger sound and a brighter sound so see if you can work with this and listen to those ring tones and that will really improve your intonation all over after a while you'll suddenly get a big surprise and wow, I suddenly can play in tune. So I hope this was useful.